What is your most controversial cooking opinion? Crockpot liners feel like you're just asking for cancer. Crockpots don't even take long to clean and that's generally the only thing other than plates slash utensils that'll need to be cleaned. After you eat, you're only saving yourself a couple of minutes. My best friend has disposable everything and it fine drives me bonkers. I'd argue that my controversial opinion is only controversial in Italy, where I come from. I like making chicken with pasta. I make it into a sauce similar to bolognese, but I'll put small chicken bits instead of the mince. My family call me a savage for eating such things together, but my boyfriend suggested me as an idea and it's now a dish I enjoy. I'm sure there are people in other parts of Italy that would welcome your weird chicken pasta. It's not totally food homogenous. My nonna and mum were outraged when I served them lasagne with bay chimel in it, because we are southern and apparently that's a northern thing. Sorry that your southern lasagne is dry mum. Don't take it out on my good lasagne. Go find your food people. There's no such thing as breakfast food. You can eat a steak in the morning and fry an egg for dinner if you want. It's just food. Or, hear me out. Steak and eggs for breakfast. Filipino breakfast is just leftovers with an egg on it. I hate burgers that are too damn tall to eat properly. Not all moms or grandmas are amazing cooks. Yes my mom has some good dishes she makes, but nuking brussels sprouts in the microwave with orange marmalade is not one of them. My mother-in-law is a lovely woman. Terrible cook. I'm glad she's in Manhattan, because it's a good excuse to go out order in when we visit, yeah. Every time my wife fries a steak it's dark brown on the outside and medium rare on the inside. Perfection. Every time her mother cooks a steak it ends up grey all the way through. Awful. My mom boiled brussels sprouts, thereby convincing my siblings and I that brussels sprouts were disgusting. Years later, I was surprised to learn other people roast or saute them, and they aren't just smelly piles of mush when cooked. My mom is an okay cook. Did we eat a lot of hamburger helper? Yes. Did she make the same 7 meals in rotation? Yes. Canned veggies and mashed potatoes only? Yes. But she put food on the table and I can't say she has ever made anything inedible. My mother's number one priority in cooking is speed. She would rather get something done poorly quickly than something decent enough, but takes longer. She's also very lazy and doesn't like to do a lot of prep. Accordingly, my mother is the sort of person who takes oven ready breaded chicken, where you can literally just put it on a baking tray in the oven and do nothing for 20 minutes and deep fries it. Growing up I have been forced to eat meals that we burnt on the outside and somehow still cold and raw on the inside. Frozen keeps where the garlic butter is still a solid slab, assuming it didn't split and all the butter evaporated out to be fried separately. Beef burgers that were charcoal on the outside, but still frozen inside. Sausages that hadn't even so much as been rotated in the oil, meaning one edge was still uncooked. As a kid, I got labeled a fussy eater by my mother. Growing up I've realized that actually, I like a lot of food. It's just that my mother is an awful cook. Mile high burgers and hot dogs with so many toppings you can no longer taste the meat are awful and a pain in the A to eat. I generally eat burgers and hot dogs because I like the flavor of the meat. I realize meat is a questionable term when it comes to hot dogs and would like to actually taste them. You can dislike a food simply for its texture. Nothing to do with its taste. I don't mind the taste of baked beans, but I hate how slimy they are. And don't even get me started on when they are cold. I had covered a few months ago. I've only regained about half of my taste and smell. Texture matters way more than it used to. I cook better than my wife. Trust me, it's very controversial. Not controversial. I cook better than your wife too. I also outcook this guy's wife. How to say pecan I swear my family has gone to war over which way to pronounce it. If the dish does not otherwise require the use of hands, there should not be trails on your shrimp. I don't want to be fishing around in my damn pasta, because you couldn't be bothered to remove the tails first. I hate this so much. That being said, I've heard they can enhance the flavor during cooking, and can technically be eaten. But no and also no, that's why I cook the shrimp and the shells before anything else. Put them to the side, to dish all them, and use the same pan, to start cooking the rest of the dish. Most root vegetables, for instance, carrots, potatoes, ginger, don't need to peel when properly cooked, though I tried the same with garlic and onions and don't recommend haha. <laughs> 
In a pinch, you can sub plain yogurt for all kinds of liquids. I'm on my fifth yogurt on the rocks, and I'm not even buzzed yet. Pinch harder, we routinely sub plain Greek yogurt for sour cream. Plain yogurt instead of sour cream on tacos. First time I had it, I thought it would be gross. I could barely tell the difference and it's much healthier. Yes, always. Always useful fat plain yogurt instead of sour cream. If you can find it, anyway. My grocery stores are packed with low fat key lime pie flavored yogurt and maybe two containers of the good stuff. Stop taking the fat out. Nobody got fat because of yogurt. I have a lot of opinions about yogurt. The cream cheese based crock pot dinners are the modern equivalent of jello based dinners from the 50s. Cream cheese crock pot dinners. Can you elaborate? I have to agree with you. Even though I don't know what you're talking about. Chopped sausage plus diced tomatoes plus cream cheese. Amazing tortilla dip. I live for that TikTok creator who only makes videos how long. Until they put an entire block of cream cheese in a crock pot recipe and the videos only last until said block goes it. It's great. It's at its best. When it's the first ingredient in. 3 second videos. Where he can't get the title out. Before it's over. I could go the rest of my life without seeing another recipe for crack chicken. I remember the cream of whatever soup casseroles my childhood. Not a spice to be detected for miles. Burnt garlic is far too common. Some people, I'm hesitant to say most, toss garlic straight into a hot pan, and then continue to cook onions, peppers, etc. Garlic needs less time than most other things, and should be put in later, so it doesn't burn. Only controversial to some elitists, a buddy of ours is like this. Things like an air fryer or sous vide are not cheating. Take your right is no t real c o o k n g elsewhere. If I want a air fryer salmon fill it for 8 minutes instead of stick it in the oven for 20. And then toss it on a bed of single serve 2 minute microwavable instant stick rice instead of make a large portion. That has to cook for 30 minutes. I'll do just that. And it's still a real meal. And if I'm delicious too. I literally don't even get how you could argue on this. Since as I understand it an air fryer works exactly the same as a convection oven does. Some food tastes better a little bit burnt. Con. Is a good example. A bit burned on the grill. It's still good. Absolute heaven to eat slightly burned corn on the cob from a grill. Case in point. Imho the only way. To make brussels sprouts good is to make them slightly burnt. Char roasted brussels sprouts. And pan set topped with balsamic glaze changed my cousin's life at thanksgiving. Crispy goodness. Not only that. But some food should be burnt. In Mexican cooking. If you didn't char your tortillas or chillas you didn't do it right. Hot dogs on the grill. Blackened and split baby. A good char dog is heavenly. It's how my grandpa liked them. And I'm the only one of his 14 grandkids who liked them like that too. He died a few years ago, but I still think about him whenever I eat one. Most people slash companies do not know how to do salted caramel. Every salted caramel product I've had homemade or otherwise has been like mouth puckeringly salty. The point is to lightly salt it to bring out the more subtle flavors, not literally make salty caramel. Or when it's just regular caramel with huge chunks of salt on top. This is the correct way. I don't want a perfect homogeneous blend between sweet slash salty. I want to eat something sweet and suddenly get these salty surprises in between. I'm vegetarian. Most restaurants should just stop serving vegetarian dishes. If they can't be bothered to make something that tastes good. You cannot just put kale, quinoa, some random veg. And a vinaigrette in a bowl and charge $25. They need to take a page from some Indian cookbooks and adapt. So true. I often don't like the vegan slash vegetarian options at restaurants. They always feel like an afterthought. No protein. Weird buzzword ingredients. Lack of flavor. Right now. So many restaurants have a beyond slash impossible burger as their only veg option and it's sad. I can get that anywhere. I can make it myself. My favorite is that veggie burger is like Russian roulette. Will you get a frozen spicy black bean burger? A salad on a bun? A fake meat burger? A grilled mushroom? The waiter sure doesn't know. I'm a meat eater. But I like veggie burgers a lot. But now restaurants instead of increasing their vegetarian options. And serving both veggie burgers and fake meat burgers will only serve the fake meat option. I can't imagine how frustrating. That must be for an actual vegetarian. I've done the final egg coating on apple pies with a macute brush more times than I'd like to admit. Used macute brush. Cause that kind of changes things. 
How else are you gonna get the perfect golden brown crust? Red onions should be called purple onions. That is 100% true. In Spanish they are called cebala morada. Purple onion. That's what my mother-in-law calls me. Till purple onions are called red onions in English. Huh. Meal prep is just eating leftovers all week. Renting our spare room to my wife's nephew. So he can internship out here. He recently go into meal prepping. Judas cooking 2 to 3 frozen pizzas every Sunday and storing them in Tupperware. Funniest shy I've ever seen. He's got the spirit, but he ain't the smartest. Wow, that's big brain right there. Baby steps, but also, teach him how to cook. I used to meal prep like 5 meals, so they lasted 2 to 3 days, but by the second I was sick of it lol. Me too. I eat a couple servings during the week, after cooking a batch of whatever, put the rest in the freezer knowing I will find them later after the getting sick of it wears off. It usually takes a few weeks for me to circle back to things. Yay freezers. Use what you have on hand. Trust yourself to make it work. Looks at chocolate and chicken. Marley mmmmmm. I've recently been incorporating this mincel in my cooking. I no longer have vegetables going bad, because it's not a part of the recipe. I make my mashed potatoes using a pastry cutter. You don't burn your knuckles. As a lifelong carnivore I will say that, if tofu is cooked properly it is absolutely delicious. I would even go so far as to say I prefer it in certain dishes over animal protein. Pad Thai. Tofu Pad Thai can if I'm get it. It's so 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 good. The way tofu is treated in western cuisine is a crime. It's not just for vegetarians. It's a delicious ingredient. That cooked well appeals to omnivores and herbivores alike. In fact, in many Chinese and Korean dishes, it is cooked with meat. For instance, Mapo tofu. The idea that it is a meat replacement, that you choke down instead of a steak is ludicrous. I always tell people who think tofu is IP to order Mapo tofu from a good Chinese restaurant. Tofu in a hot pot are delicious. Soaks up all the flavor. I very much so enjoy seton. Hail seton. Heating up leftover chicken and dumping it into a bowl of ramen noodles counts as a proper meal. I'm fully prepared to die on this hill, adding an egg or two to ramen, when you have no leftover meat is also a proper meal, an egg, a little sesame oil, and a little powdered nori significantly improves even the cheapest package ramen. MSG works, it's what makes Doritos and other salty snacks so tasty most people that claim to be sensitive to MSG will readily admit to eating these, and not having any issues, it's also on basically all fast food chicken. Some tomatoes and many cheeses are also full of MSG, and tastes so good. I wish more people knew the idea, that it's bad for you is a myth. Please tell my gluten free groups this. I'm sick to death of hearing people moan about something having MSG. Uncle Roger has convinced me to try this mysterious ingredient one day. Haven't found it in my local grocery store, but will check a nation store soon. By accent in the spice aisle, it's straight up MSG. If you have a section in your grocery store with Latin food, and see packets of sasm that's MSG with a few other ingredients mixed in, it's in a ton of stuff you probably have had. Doritos, KFC fried chicken, Chick-fil-A, Pringles, Cheetos, Boar's head meats, and so on. It's in so many things. It used to be common in Chinese fast food, but a lot of Chinese restaurants advertised no MSG after a sort of racist campaign claiming Chinese restaurants make you sick because they use MSG. It was absurd and has been debunked. Of course eating any fast food too much is bad for you, but MSG was no more to blame for that than eating high calorie low nutrition food is in general. When frying a food that you plan on doing the flour egg flour method for, Try getting some plain yogurt, and thinning it with water in place of the egg. I did this once, when we were out of eggs, and I'm never going back. It gives a much better crunch and a hint of tang that is just chef's kiss. I was about to suggest buttermilk here as well but really not much difference. Especially if you were talking Greek yogurt. I've breaded 100s of chicken fried steaks with buttermilk. Flour slash corn meal slash seasonings at one of the restaurants I worked at. I use buttermilk exclusively for frying chicken. I season the buttermilk pretty heavily and marinate the chicken in it for at least 30 minutes. The meth does not have to be blue to be pure. The blue actually denotes an impurity. 
Source, partner is a chemistry PhD. I'm sure this is true, but BB explained that Ol Walt was using his own Nobel Prize worthy method with a university level lab with the end product being different to the norm, but more pure. Just store it all in coolness. It actually should be pretty clear or cloudy white. I believe that you can teach yourself to like slash tolerate certain foods. If you want to, I sort of forced myself to like peas until one day I found I actually do like them. Same with scotch, smelly cheese, cigarettes and wasabi. I'd like that recipe for cigarettes and wasabi, please. One pack cigarettes, one pack wasabi. Shake it up in a bag and chuck that sucker in the microwave. Nuke for a solid 5 minutes on high and go reevaluate your life. I agree. Did this with coffee and now I can't live without it. Gotta love how you threw in cigarettes. Like we were supposed to just breeze past that. I don't think you're supposed to eat cigarettes. I have tried to like mushrooms for like 25 years now. They are cheap, nutritious, locale. The kids like them. They go in everything. And there are so many different kinds we could even grow. But they are just so incredibly disgusting to me. Anyone who gets mad at the tiny change you made to some classic Italian dish is really just mad that your version tastes better than their grandmother's. Sometimes I put garlic in my carbonara just to watch the world burn. It's pretty good. This is a safe space, but I'll be honest some of these are really hard to upvote. This is what I asked for, but I'm suffering with my newfound knowledge of how you heathens cook. I love that this is currently the top comment, and that it was written only about 15 minutes after you asked the question. Reddit is the opposite of a safe space. Have you seen some of the people on here? Oh I was totally lying. I'm bullying everyone. They deserve it. Pepperonis need a little time in a pan before putting in on the pizza and in the oven. Optimize crispiness. My secret shame pepperoni chips. I use a preheated baking stone to make pizza. One time a pepperoni fell off onto the stone. It was fried to a crisp, and it tasted amazing. Now my pizza is ringed with pepperoni directly on the hot pizza stone for those yummy pepperoni chips. You may have just changed my life. I'll know the next time I have pizza. Presentation barely matters to me. I've had many delicious scoops of slop. There's definitely something to be said for a big bowl of stuff mixed together, so that every bite is perfect. That pretty much describes what my Thanksgiving dinner was this year. It's not even that. Like do we really have to garnish every fine thing when half of the time it's not for flavor it's just to make it not look poop brown in a bowl. IDK it's overhyped on YouTube for sure. I live in a Ukrainian slash Polish neighborhood in a major US city. You can go to the nice, modern restaurant that costs a little more. It's not bad. If you want real Ukrainian or Polish food, go to the place with a grandma behind the counter. The harder it splats on the plate the better the food is. We're in the third day of my favorite meals of the year. What our friend's daughters call turkey slop. It's mashed potatoes, stuffing, con, gravy and bits of turkey, and every forkful has some of each. KFC has bowls like this. You just described 90% of Indian cuisine, which I find absolutely delicious. Avocado doesn't need to be in everything. Neither does bacon or sriracha. My boyfriend would die if he heard me say that about sriracha. My personal pet peeve is avocado on hot dishes. Hot avocado is gross as hell. Hot avocado is bad, but cold avocado in a hot dish is great. As an adult, you should clean as you cook. I just said to my husband the other day that the single most important thing I learned in culinary school was to clean as you go. I hear so many people say they hate cooking because of the clean up after. So clean as you cook. That way when it's done you're 90% done with clean up. Sacrificing appearance for taste is totally worth it. Recipes are only opinions. Feel free to mix things up as you see fit. People in my household go berserk when I suggest this. I usually follow the recipe the first time I cook something. Especially if I haven't even tried it before. Then I go at it free form from there. I also do this. If I follow everything to the letter and I end up not liking it, then it's not something I did that made the food bad. After that I can screw with the recipe. When cooking, yes. But when baking, stick to the recipe. I agree with this. Only if said person has at least a basic understanding what what ingredients are important. My wife, 
Bless her heart. Always ends up being like her we don't have ex. That's fine I bet it won't be that different. And it's like the single most important ingredient in the recipe. This is my mill trying to convince me to leave out real onions and or garlic in every recipe. Because I can just use powder. Lol. My wife stops a step before that. She reads a recipe. Doesn't understand it. And orders Chipotle. Or Jimmy John's. Every single time. We're out of noodles. I'm sure this spaghetti will be just fine. My girlfriend always asks me what I'm going to make, and is just boggled, when I tell her I don't know yet. Any home with rice and meat and it has a meal ready to be made, I agree with you, but don't comment on a recipe, if you change the recipe. I hate when people comment on for something like a homemade kakido ice cream, and be like two fifths stars. I'm vegetarian so I swapped the cream for soy milk, and used egg substitute for the cookie dough. It was too hard and salty, I've had the same problem but on the opposite end of the scale. So many recipes will have 100s or 1000s of 4 fifths stars and every one like was good after I added an extra egg, half a cup of flour, and half the sugar. Also increase the temp to 375, and reduce the cook time by 5 minutes. Seriously, hey, I completely altered your recipe, and it came out like crap, but I blame you. Those people need a skillet to the face, I know what you mean. My girlfriend will not change a recipe and even abandon it, if we don't have absolutely everything it says, when I feel we could probably do without ground parsley. First you get rid of the ground parsley, then what? The extra chair in the living room is unnecessary too. You know what there's too much space in the house, so you rent out a room, since you don't need it anymore. Too bad you rented to a murderer who proceeds to kill you so follow the air fine recipe and get the ground parsley. A meal doesn't need meat to be complete and satisfying. I say this as a meat eater. You don't have to serve spaghetti with the sauce in a dollop on top. It's okay to mix the sauce into the spaghetti and then serve it. Especially if everyone is eating the exact same thing. Apparently mixing first is the proper and better tasting way. Gotta finish cooking the pasta in the sauce. This is actually how Italians do it. Sauce needs time to soak into the pasta, and the sauce is supposed to be the star of the show. Speaking of pasta, if you're going to use store-bought or dried pasta, look for the rough texture of bronze-cut pasta. This pasta has more texture and holds the sauce better. Not my opinion, I haven't tried it, but my friend says peanut butter goes well on burgers.